Hey everybody, it's Moonhorse again. Um, coming in just before this video with a little bit of information. We're talking about the University of Utah healthcare program. Um, a friend of mine is not doing well and needs you guys, if you can, to look into this program, donate if you can, help out if you can. They're looking for, you know, donations, uh, people who can do live kidney transplants, the whole thing. This is a very good cause, and it's very, very important. So if you guys have anything you can do to help, or any way that you can help at all, uh, please do. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to everybody. It's not just me. It's about everybody. Everybody's in this together, so we should all put together to actually do something. Like, if you're interested, or you have any way that you can possibly get in touch with this, or if you're in the area and you can do something to help out, you can contact them at uofulivingdonor.org. Or you can contact them at the phone number 801-587-8816. Uh, if you're interested in helping my friend specifically when you get through to somebody or you're talking to somebody, ask for Corinne C. Powell. That's who needs the help right now. It's this person who asked me to kind of help out, not just for her, but for everybody. So if you want to help out, you want to contribute to a good cause, you want to do something good, really help these people out they could use it all right so now on with the show <laughs> sup motherfuckers it's your boy moon horse it's your boy we watched a really shitty movie i'm here with sangha we watched a really shitty movie it's okay let me explain it yeah she's like off uh mike I'm going to set off camera, but this isn't video. So let me explain a couple things before I sit down and we talk. Um, one, we decided to watch, because how many times has this happened? A movie called Old Fashioned, which is a fan fiction movie of Fifty Shades of Grey. So basically, we're watching a fan fiction of a fan fiction. <laughs> because how many times in your life can you say that shit, right? I, I honestly don't have words for that, but, you know, I decided, fuck it, we're going to do it, because, you know, it's funny. Woo! God, is it ever. Um, oh, God, yes, <laughs> and God is a part of this. Yeah, God is a good part to bring into this, because he shows up a lot. It's a, it's a, it is, and if I'm not mistaken, the website referred to it as the religious answer to Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, if that's what it is, you fell fucking short about 15 times. So let me explain. I need more wine. Let me explain a few more things. <coughs> to you we're already kind of out of it because it's been a crazy couple of days we went to new orleans like two or three days ago to see p lander z that was a fun fucking party oh, it's great we got crazy went on a whole bunch of adventures um yeah but anyway so, oh yeah we met a cool band from japan who's like super awesome so anyway this movie though this movie though we decided to watch this movie, and I'm like, it's a religious movie. I'm not going to be able to make it through it without getting, like, totally fucked up. Yep. So, Shit yeah, I drank, like, two and a half bottles of wine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel really good. But this movie is really stupid. The only good parts about this movie are... Um, the there's aunt. A, yeah, his aunt. The girl. So, okay, let's set up the movie first. first oh, oh yes, is, yes, we must. This is a movie about a guy who is the holiest motherfucker on the planet. Mm, who who owns a antique shop called Old Fashioned. Thus the name. <laughs> and he thinks he's like so much better than everybody else. Uh, except the movie doesn't straight out tell you that. It just kind of implies that by a bunch of other people. Basically, what this movie is saying is this motherfucker needs to get over himself. Um, he uses his faith as a prop for his egotistical self <coughs> flatulating inflammatory bullshit. He is annoying as fuck. It's like the worst part is is when he does statistics. Oh yeah, he's constantly quoting statistics about divorce. Yep. And he's never been married, so this matters to nobody because he's fucking lame. I think the best part was Oh my god, the best part was when they go on this date thing at night. Ugh. And it's cold, and uh -huh. he gives oh, yeah. his jacket to her. Yes, that's later in the movie, though, but yeah. We basically figured out that this isn't just a, a I, fucking, you know, re re religious relationship. I'm sorry, I'm very drunk. Movie. It's also unintentionally, like, the neck beardiest shit. Yep. 
It's like Neckbeard Jesus got all up in this shit. Woo! So, let's, like, let's start from the beginning. Yeah, so this lady comes to town. We don't know why. She just comes to town. And he owns a fucking antique shop. And he fixes stuff in like the bottom of this antique shop. And he has an apartment for rent upstairs. So basically he works and lives out of a basement. Um, yeah, even really. though it's on ground floor, but it's always dark, so it's you might as well be a fucking basement. Yeah. And his aunt owns the place, and I can't be too pissed at the guy for taking care of his elderly aunt. I mean, I did that shit for my grandmother. You know, you got to hear your family represent. Yeah. But he's an asshole. That's not the point. So this motherfucker rents the room to this lady, and and she's like, oh the. What was it? The, the stove. F- yeah, the stove wouldn't light because it's a really old stove and the pilot light went out. And you got to light the pilot light uh, by, uh, what you call it, manually. Mm-hmm. It's not like the one we have. See, well, when we had, we have an electric stove now. We had a gas stove, but the pilot light was electric. So you plugged it in, the pilot light, so the little clicker thing. So you turn it on, and it goes click, 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 and then the fucking fire comes out. So it's basically an electric ignition, but they didn't have that all the time. So it used to be a little slow ass uh, natural gas trickle. And it lights, and it's a little bitty fire. It's, it's a little less than an inch long. It's a little bitty fire. And then when you turn your burners on, it increases the gas through a different pipe. And a little bitty fire is like, ooh, fire spread. And it goes, and spits it out over there. Well, the pilot light went out. If your pilot light goes out, none of your burners are light. Yeah. I'm explaining how gas stoves work because I'm very drunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, her so- pilot light went out. It's an easy fix, but she didn't know that because... It's oh. the modern era of cell phones, <coughs> and who the fuck still has a pilot light oh. manual system? So he comes up with his stuff, yeah, and he and she's like, seriously, he can't be in the same area. Yeah, he like, won't be in the same room with a woman. He's so not like he in a relationship with a blanket for her to sit outside. Yeah. Okay, so creepy motherfucker shows up with a blanket. And a toolbox to be able... And she's like, my oven doesn't work. My stove, I'm sorry. Stove doesn't work. The oven's fine. Yeah, same shit. Whatever. So, and, and this motherfucker shows up with a blanket and a toolbox. And it's like, you have to stand outside. It's like fucking October or some shit. It's cold. I don't know what month it is. They don't say... You it's know, fall. Some, sometime in the fall. It could be October. We don't know. Christians don't celebrate Halloween, apparently. I don't fucking know. This is dumb. Anyway, he's like, have a blanket, sit out on the porch, because you can't be in <laughs> here when, I, when I'm when i fixing a pilot light, because I don't know fucking why, because Jesus don't like it. So, Jesus. yeah, and she's like, are you fucking serious? Now, personally, switch positions, if I had been that woman, and my pilot light went out, and I didn't know how to fix it, and I called the landlord, and I'm like, bro, come up here, fix this motherfucking pilot light, and he shows up, and he's like, you gotta stand on the porch. And he's like, I brought you a blanket. And I'd be like, look, homie, I respect the fact that you have a face. However, it is 15 degrees out there, which means you are the craziest batshit motherfucker I've ever seen. It's cold outside. It's 1130 at the motherfucking night. I am not standing on the porch. Get your skinny ass in here. Fix my fucking stove. Or I'm going to beat your ass to death with a pipe wrench, Okay. Fix the shit I told you to fix. That's the reason I'm here. You said you'd fix it. You lied. I'm about to kick the shit out of you, boy. I'm about to kick the shit out of you. That's what's gonna happen. I'm just saying. I'm uh, just saying. Wait, calm, calm down, baby. But no. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. But no. She she's just like, oh blanket, charming. It stands out on the porch because the first thing we learn about our two leads in this movie is they A have the most boring story in the entire movie and B are like the dumbest fucking people I ever met. <coughs> These people are fucking stupid. They're rock stupid. I barely remember what happened after that. Like, uh, some about like she kept breaking things. Yeah, she kept breaking her that, shit. So he'd show up. Until to the point that he finally goes on a date with her. Yeah. So instead of just or saying starts like, dating her, whatever. Yeah. Instead of just being like, "Look, I'm into you. We should go out," um, and saying that, she starts coming up with all these contrived ideas of like, "Shit, my apartment broke. Come up and fix it," and he shows up to fix the shit. Right. But, uh, like, the whole time they're talking, and it's dumb. It's really dumb. Yeah. But it goes back and forth. The and dialogue is terrible. And so is the editing. Yeah, the editing and the dialogue. The dialogue sounds like it's being re... re uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Those animation clip things that people made a while back where it's just like, everybody talks like a robot. It sounds like that. They all sound like that. It's really yeah. shitty. It's really badly ADR'd so and shit. I feel bad for the actress... 
that did the main lead. Yeah, because not, she was a human. Yeah, she's not a bad looking lady. She could have been in better movies. Yeah, and she actually played a she human. She had some talent. She, she was funny. She played a human. Yeah, she has some he, pretty good fucking he was, lines. Clay was the robot. Well, look, he made that movie. He wrote that movie. Wait, you know? wait, wait. Are you serious? Yeah, that's the director. Oh, my. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's the oh motherfucker my made it. Oh, God. Yeah. Woo. All right. Look, well, all right. So, to, like, set this stage even better whoa. before we go in and, then, like, deeper into the plot. When you do those movies where it's, like, the. What? Okay. All right, uh, grab my keys off the table. Sango needs to use stuff. She needs my keys. Um, so I'm going to tell you the story of this movie while we're here. It's just you and me, love. How's it going? Let me let me tell you some shit. I'm really fucking drunk. I'm really close to the microphone. I'm falling off my sofa. I'm getting up. Oh, fuck. I need to be up. Because otherwise I'm going to lay down and fall asleep. So let me tell you about this movie, right? So, <coughs> this motherfucker. This motherfucking movie. Oh, God. Sorry. It's supposed to be the answer to Fifty Shades of Grey. This motherfucking movie is, like, painful to watch. Everything about it is insane. Um, basically, the only thing we learned is we this motherfucker made a religious movie in which his main character was so religious that even the religious people told him, like, look, dude, bruh, you gotta tone it the fuck down. If you don't stop... You gonna make yourself and everybody around you fucking crazy, okay? You you gotta stop, dude. You gotta fucking stop. So so this motherfucker and like right, okay, she keeps breaking shit in her apartment to be like, dude, come come over here and fix this shit, right? Instead of asking him out, okay, so she just asked him out. If she just asked him out because he's thinking it's like, uh, I don't date because mm -hmm, my lady. Like I said, this motherfucker sounds like a neckbeard. He sounds like a very religious neckbeard. So if he just, like, asked her out or some shit, or no, no, no. She has to ask him out because she has to pursue him. The ultimate neckbeard fantasy where a girl thinks you're super hot and, and she's going to do anything to be with you, even though you have zero fucking fuck qualifications for dating because you're a piece of shit and you don't want to acknowledge the fact that your fucking personality is shit. So this motherfucker is just like, no, she has to ask me out. Meanwhile, if she had asked him out, because his big thing is, I don't date, because Jesus. Any normal person, any normal person, I'm talking to you. Everybody listen to this. You, listen to this. Pay attention. I'm talking to you. If you had asked this motherfucker out, say you're interested in him. I know you're not. Nobody is. But just say you are. And you're like, hey, dude, think you're hot shit. Let's rock this. Let's fucking do it. Let's let's go out, have a good time, do all that stuff. And his big thing is, uh, dating doesn't train you to be uh, good life partners. It trains you to be good dates. First off, that's some circular fucking bullshit logic. I don't know where you came up with that, but it's dumb. Because the entire point of going out on a date with somebody is to find out if you're compatible with them. To find out if your interests match theirs enough to the point that you could possibly, in some fucking perspective a little bit be romantic partners that is the entire purpose of a date everybody knows that every fucking body knows that that is the reason for the word date <laughs> fuck you we all know it this motherfucker says that dating only trains you to be good dates i would love to see the leaps of fucking logic you went through to get to that fucking answer bro show me your work I am your fucking algebra teacher. I demand to see your fucking work. You are absolutely out of your goddamn mind. But okay, continue. Tell me more. I'm just drunk enough to fucking... <sighs> I'm drunk enough to fucking let you talk. So he's like, no. Dating doesn't work. So if you, my humble, wonderful listener, the person I love, you, decides you want to ask this motherfucker out... And he's like, I don't date unless it's, you know, for marriage. That's the thing. First off, red flag. I don't know you and your thing is I want to only get married, period. It doesn't matter how old you are. That's creepy. Your entire purpose is only for marriage. You have no purpose of just enjoying the company of another person. You have no purpose other than annoying, interesting, you know, finding somebody interesting, in investing time in another person to learn about them. Your only purpose, your only purpose, your only purpose. 
only motherfucking purpose is to find that one person you're going to stick your dick into for the rest of your fucking life, bruh, you fucking crazy. That's all I'm saying. I ain't saying you need to fuck everybody on the planet. I'm just saying if your only purpose in life is to specifically find that one person that you're going to marry, and that is it, you have no other fucking goals, none, zero, zilch, nada, nothing, you the boring, most boring piece of shit I ever met. You have no interest outside of this? Do you not have the internet? Reach, bitch. Reach, learn some shit. Anyway, so yeah, this is our introduction to our couple. They read their lines, which obviously have been redone over and over because they're ADR as fuck. Ooh. And they're embarrassing. The whole shit is embarrassing. This, everything is embarrassing. So it continues in this bullshit manner of this whole idea of they are supposed to be a certain way, right? He will only be with her if she acts and looks and does all this shit a certain way. Because Jesus told him to save himself. Except Jesus himself would think you're a fucking asshole. He named you Clay. Because that's exactly what you act like. A substance that is easily molded and has zero personality. You dirt boring motherfucker. You don't think that's telling? Dumbass. Anyway, he has friends. One, a guy who has been with this woman that he's with for like eight years, but they're not married and they have a kid. We're supposed to look down on them. I don't know why. They seem really happy. They seem really happy and they seem to be having a really good life. So much of a good life that in one of the scenes where they're having like a party at the dude's house, they have a bar in the background. I don't mean a pop-up, hey, we're having a party bar. I mean a literally built into my house goddamn champagne spritzer bar. Bro, I wish I had enough money to make a fucking champagne spritzer bar in my goddamn house. I ain't got that kind of money. That must be cool as shit. Really cool. I mean the kind of champagne spritzer bar where you have that special rack built out of fucking oak that you can hang the glasses upside down above the bottles. I'm serious. That shit is in this movie. That is classy as shit. I like these people. Alright, I like this couple because they're really cool. When he decides they want to get married, she brings up the fact that they both decided... Both decided, mind you. Both decided, mind you. I'm saying this multiple times because I really need to drill this in. I don't have an actual power drill to make sure this shit gets remembered. Both decided that they didn't need a ring or rings, plural, and a piece of paper to define their relationship. But, but, uh, he wanted to propose to her specifically as a very romantic gesture. Which she found very romantic. However, because they have a kid and they were not married, we're not supposed to like them. That's what this movie is saying. This movie is pointing out that their relationship is not as healthy as Clay Walsh's don't touch me until we're married, only kisses on the cheek because I'm a fucking 12-year-old boy incel bullshit relationship is. Personally, I think this man and his new wife happen to be quite nice. They obviously are doing well for themselves. They obviously are very happy together. They have obviously raised a very healthy and happy child. Their child is learning Chinese because they think it's cool. They obviously are very nice people. So why is this movie trying to tell me I should look down on these people? Because this movie's a piece of shit, bro. This movie's a piece of shit. Hey, Sango, how you doing? You alright? She's not feeling good. So I'm going to go on a rant about this movie. So, uh, yeah, so the whole fucking movie goes to this point, right? So we're not supposed to like the couple who's getting married because they have a kid out of wedlock. Woohoo. You know, it's dumb. And it's really fucking stupid because it was made, this movie's not old, by the way. If you look it up, I forget when the fuck it was made, but it was only made a couple years ago. So we're supposed to think they're bad because Jesus says it's bad or some shit. I don't fucking know. This movie's dumb. And then he has a friend who's like a shock jock radio announcer who says shit like, women are stupid. But he's on like some kind of, I guess basically he's supposed to be Howard Stern. I don't fucking know, dude. And 
So, like, he's an asshole, and I don't really know why anybody's friends with him because he's an asshole. Like, he has really no redeemable qualities, and I don't know why anybody's friends with him. Like, I literally don't. The only thing that really comes up about him is that at some point in his life he's moving to L.A. so his show can become broadcast, I guess, on, like, Satellite XM or some shit like that. Okay. I don't really know why we're focusing on this character at any point in time because he doesn't really do anything to the plot. Um, he's a dick. Everybody says he's a dick. The end. Woo. I don't fucking know. This movie's dumb. So, the entire time, honestly, best friend and his wife, well, soon-to-be wife throughout the entire movie, are the most interesting couple. Clay Walsh and Amber, is the other girl's name, um, are, like, the most boring people I've ever met. They, she constantly, Amber's constantly trying to drag Clay out of this holier-than-thou, I'm-so-self-important fucking bullshit mentality and into reality, and he is resisting fucking to the nail, like, it's his entire existence if anybody should ever happen to be nice to him or show him a good time. So, basically, we have someone who is desperately trying to enlighten this motherfucker uh, into the world of reality and be like, it's okay, you don't have to constantly be like, Jesus is my friend. He gets it. It's cool. JC is like, you need to chill the fuck out, bro. And he won't do it. He just won't. So, this movie gets really dumb. And, of course, we have the third act breakup. So, the only reason Shock Jock Friend exists is for two things. So, one, cool guy has a bachelor party where all his friends show up. And by friends, I mean extras whose names we don't actually know. Because that's storytelling 101. You know, a bunch of people we don't know the names of. And they hire a stripper, or like, shock jock friend hires a stripper. As the lady shows up, and Clay is just like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You have like a wife, you have a kid, what are you doing? Don't be doing this. And it's like, okay. Okay. Here's my problem with that. So, you're engaged, right? Let's just say that. Let's just say you are. Man, woman, doesn't matter. You're engaged. Okay? Your friend hires a stripper. Again, gender doesn't matter. If you, as the engaged party, are just like, I don't approve of, of strippers. I'm getting married, like, tomorrow. I shouldn't do that. Ugh, excuse me. Shouldn't do that. This is my relationship. I just shouldn't do Oh, God. I just shouldn't do that. Um, okay. So what you do, excuse yourself from the party. Hello. Hold on. Okay, so I fucked up the whole thing, but now I got it fixed. Anyway, um, yeah, I have to edit some shit together. I had people show up at my office. Um, so what was I talking about? Old-fashioned, right. This movie's dumb. So, uh, fuck. I'm trying to remember where I left off. I'm really drunk, you guys. If you can't tell, I'm... <laughs> I went through, like, two bottles of wine tonight. I probably shouldn't have, but fuck it. This movie required it. Do it. The stripper. Right. So, Songer's also here, but she's not feeling good. She's kind of, like, giving me notes. So it's just you guys and me. The stripper. So... Shock Chock Friend hires a stripper because it's a bachelor party and Clay gets all pissed off and then so does like cool guy friend who gets all like, you know, I don't know, man. After, after you know, Jesus boy Clay is just like, you know, come on, man. And he actually says it like that. He's like, come on, man, what are you doing? Come on, man. He's like broody. He has like a 20-year-old's haircut, but he's obviously like 35. It's really stupid. Um, I mean, I can't say much. I have really long hair, but like at the same time, I don't give a fuck. And that's the point. But, like, this guy is, like, obviously doing this for artistic cred, quote-unquote. And so there's a stripper. And she shows up. And, again, if you want to put this in personal perspective, okay, whoever you are, doesn't matter gender. You're at your bachelor slash bachelorette party, whatever. Stripper. Friend hires a stripper. Like, okay, I'm not into that. So what you do very obviously is you excuse yourself from the party and be like, you guys have fun. I'm going to go chill for a minute. 
you know, I'm, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, y'all have fun with the stripper or whatever. Because you hired this person. Gender does not matter, obviously. It's it's whoever you hired. Um, they're here to do a job. It is their job. They want to do their job. They want to get paid. That is why they're here. So let them do their job. Because they've been hired to do a job. That's fine. They get their money. They're on their way. Personally, if it was me... It's so my bachelor party or some shit. Somebody hires a stripper. I'm not into it. That's cool. You guys hang, you know, do whatever you want. I'm going to go hang out at the bar or some shit. I'll come back, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes later, maybe an hour, whatever the fuck. Y'all let me know. I'll show up. It's all cool. But I do not want this person who showed up to do a job to get fucked out of their money. Because that is not right. It does not matter whether or not I approve of what they're doing. It matters the fact that they showed up to do a job and they should get paid to do the job they showed up to do. It's their job. So, that isn't what happens in this movie, though. No. Clay shits himself and throws a big fit about, like, you know, come on, man. Come on, you have, like, a wife. You have a kid. Come on, man. And the guy's just like, yeah, you know, okay, I can't do this. So, cool friend becomes kind of a dick right there. And shock jock friend is like, what the fuck, man? I hired a stripper. But for some reason, instead of the two of them leaving and the entire room... Again, there's a whole bunch of people in this room. It's like a full room. Instead of them all being like, okay, stripper, cool, we'll give you money. Easily fucking this woman out of like two, three hundred dollars. Um, no, they all just like, yeah, well, if he doesn't want to do it, we're not going to do it. What? Uh, fuck, it was really dumb. So it didn't make any sense. And... Okay, so, like, they're outside, so Shock Jock Friend shows up, and he's just like, what the fuck's wrong with you, Clay? What, you think you're ruining shit? And he's just like, come on, you know, he has a wife. And it's like, I mean, fuck you. Nobody asked you to intervene. Nobody asked you to get involved. His points are valid. Nobody fucking asked your input, dude. If you had a problem with it personally, excuse yourself from the room. Because this is not your fucking bachelor party. It is not your fucking room. You do not make the goddamn rules. You are simply an attendant. Okay? If I went to a bar and I didn't like the fact that they serve, I don't know, Jägermeister, I would specifically exclude myself from the bar that serves this. It is not the bar's fault that I don't like this drink. The bar does not need to stop serving this drink because obviously the bar makes money off of serving this drink. It would be a dick move to do that, which is exactly what happens. A dick move. And we're supposed to see Clay as the sympathetic lead. He's a dick. He's a huge dick. Just like the big, like fucking beyond Ron Jeremy times dick. He's just fucking 14 inches of dick. Unbelievable amounts of dick. It's it's shocking that we're supposed to empathize with this guy, and he's an absolute fucking tool. I own a workshop, a literal workshop, by the way. It's like an actual workshop as big as my office of what I've shown you guys in that video. It's the same length with all that kind of shit. It is full of tools. There's not enough tool in that office to match with the fucking I just watched on the screen. This motherfucker is so much of a tool, he might as well be branded with craftsmen across his fucking neck. He is an absolute goddamn tool. He might as well be a fucking socket wrench. It is unbelievable how much of a tool this asshole is. So yes, he ruins the entire shit. So then the stripper and the bouncer who kind of looks... The bouncer himself kind of looks like a chubby Steve Austin, which is kind of weird. It kind of threw me off for a little bit. So I was like, is it really Steve? Is it? No, it doesn't sound like him. It's not him. I don't think it's him. Kind of looks like him. Might have been the mustache. But anyway, it kind of looks like a chubby Steve Austin. Um, kind of like if Steve Austin stopped wrestling and ate like a whole bunch of donuts and was just like, you know, fuck it, donuts and beer, that's what I'm going to do. And, like, totally let himself go. He kind of looks like that in a suit, which is weird. It was, like, really weird. So it was just like, I remember this guy from when I was a kid. So, aside from the fact that it was creepy, nostalgic, um, and, again, I'm sure it wasn't him. Uh, <laughs> this guy shows up, and he's just like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You, well, he doesn't say fuck because this is a religious movie. Nobody says fuck. So I'll say it for him. Fuck! Also, what the fuck are you doing? And... 
He's like, you don't know how much money you cost this girl tonight. You know how much money you ruined for her, which is a legitimate good question. And he's like, you owe her money. Yes, he does. Absolutely. Yes, he does. He absolutely does owe her money. Because that's really fucking shitty of you to show up in the middle of this lady's job and just be like, come on, man, what the fuck? And then ruin the whole thing. All right. It does not matter if you personally approve or disapprove of strippers. Okay? That doesn't matter at this point. I know that pisses a lot of people off. Whatever. That's not the point. This woman signed up for this job. She wanted this job. She went after this job. She wanted to be a stripper. That's her fucking... That's her prerogative. It's her body. She can do whatever the fuck she wants with it. And her fucking choice was she wants to go somewhere where she can, you know, show off her titties for money. Okay? Personally, it's not my thing, but hey, you know what? It's... You're not me. It's fine. You're not me. You don't have to do the things I do. I'm okay with that. So... She goes to do exactly this. This motherfucker ruins her job. Yes, he owes her money. Yeah, you just fucked her out of like fucking almost $500. She has every right to be pissed off at you, asshole. Everybody has every right to be pissed off at you for fucking doing that. That was her fucking job and you just ruined it. It'd be the same thing as if you went into fucking, like, your job as a construction worker. You went into fucking, you know, I'm going to cut these 4 by 4s and somebody just showed up and be like, mm, I don't approve of miter saws, and took your fucking miter saw, the one you bought, the one you paid for, away from you. It's like, no, fuck you, that's my property. I can do what the fuck I want with this shit. All right? If I want to cut eye beams into the shape of giant fucking penises and stick them on the top of a fucking tower, I can do that shit. Fuck you. It's my saw. It's my tower. Fuck you. So... Yeah, Clay ruins this shit, and it's just met with no consequence. Like, you know, and she and she breaks up a fight between him and the bouncer, because the bouncer's like, fuck you, dude, and starts to get into a fight with him, and she's just like, you know, what the fuck, man? You ruined my money. And he doesn't say anything, and she's like, you think you're better than me. And he still doesn't say anything, he just turns around and walks away. And he's just like, mm, brooding artist. Mm. And honestly, Shock Jock Friend has the best line right there that explains everything about Clay right, right then and there. When they get into the fight beforehand, he's just like, so what, what the hell was that? What, you're not, you're not okay with this? And he doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, typical Clay. He's just going to take all his toys and go home. Like, yes, exactly. That's exactly how he acts with this whole fucking movie. He's so much better than everybody else that nobody's good enough for him. His aunt even makes that fucking point that the reason he stopped going to the church that she goes to is because the people in his church, the people in his church, I really want to illustrate that point, are not holy enough for his holiness, Clay Walsh. At this point, you might might just kind of ask yourself, what the fuck makes him so goddamn holy? Personally, I believe it's because somebody jammed a crucifix right up his colon, just really far up there, fisted it in there. But that's, you know, that's just me. So we find out the reason his redemption story is so redemptionful or whatever is because he used to be involved in making what is supposed to be implied as, like... What's the name of those fucking videos? Um, you know, the, the videos that had, like, the, the college girls, and they're, like, drunk, and they're like, show us your tits. Ooh, girls Gone Wild, that's the one. It's kind of like that. Except that a lot of these girls really didn't look happy when they were like, you know, oh, show us your tits. So, basically, he filmed a lot of date rape, which is really fucked up. Um, which, I guess, yeah, if you filmed a lot of date rape and made a lot of money off of fucking date rape, I, too, would seek Jesus because the police would be after me. Um, I would really hope that Christ would keep the cops off my ass. So, <clears throat> so yeah, this video exists. There's a bunch of these videos. Apparently he made a shitload of money off of it, but then gave it all up because the Lord wants him to work in a fucking old-fashioned furniture shop or some shit. And, I don't know. Personally, I think Christ would, like, see your videos and be like, dude, maybe you should, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, telling you what to do but maybe you should turn yourself in i don't know you filmed a lot of date rape bro a lot of date rape i'm not jesus but i personally think that might get you some fucking trouble so yeah he has this video and that's what made him turn to jesus 
And there's this point where he starts dating the girl, right? He starts dating this Amber girl. And it's like, you know, we have to go on all these different things. There's random dates. Because they put a bunch of dates on pieces of paper in a box. And you shake up the box and you pick one out. And then one of them involves them going to the library and reading quotes for some reason. Look, I don't, I don't know. I guess that turns them on. Uh, look, white people are weird. That's all I learned from this movie. Is white religious people are fucking weird, and they just do shit. And I don't understand them. Um, I do not understand them. But I guess that's the thing. So okay, cool, you did that. Um, and during the course of this, there's like a bunch of weird shit that happens. That's pretty much the entire movie. The movie can be summed up with the phrase "a bunch of weird shit happens," because it's all weird shit, and I don't understand it. Um, oh yeah, so we keep going back and forth between like the different dates and oh, there's all this other stuff and we have to talk about all these things and they get to this point where like, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff I'm missing, but I'm really drunk and I can't remember all of it because fuck this movie. And they get to this point where like they're walking down the street and he's trying to be all chivalrous and it's just like, mm, here's a coat, my coat. And she's like, oh, thank you. Ha ha. And I swear to God. This is the part where I had to stop the whole fucking movie. And Sango was, like, sitting on the couch fucking dying because I had to stop it because he, like, he he turns to her and goes, he gives her, like, a gift, and she's like, oh, thank you. And he's like, you're welcome, m'lady. And I'm just like, did that, did that motherfucker, did that motherfucker, hold on, stop this fucking video. Stop this whole fucking shit right now. That motherfucker, did he just say, did he just say that? Did he just say m'lady? Did he just say that unironically? He fucking... Are you, are you fucking serious right now? Are you fucking... Okay, so let me put some pieces together here. This motherfucker lives in the downstairs part of a building, right? The downstairs part. Constantly listens to his elderly aunt, even though he doesn't like her because like there's like stuff she says, and you like, go to this church, and he's like, mm, I don't care, whatever. Spends all his time fixing shit that nobody else cares about. Right? His own little hobbies. And only does things for himself specifically. Wants a woman, but can't find a woman. But the time he actually interacts with a woman, he can't be anywhere near her because he wants to prove he's a gentleman and she has to adhere to his specific standards. And says shit like, you know, milady. Is that a neckbeard for Jesus? Do these motherfuckers make a neckbeard for Jesus movie? Is that what actually happened? Am I watching a Neckbeard for Jesus movie? That's what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. That is what happened. Holy shit. And his friends are like chatty assholes. They're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he gets a girl, but like he didn't marry her because you know he doesn't understand. And then it's shock jock. Oh, you know, he only like fucks girls, but they're like total chads. They're like buff guys and the one's a black guy, so we can keep up this racial bullshit that the fucking incel community keeps pumping out like it's fucking meaning any fucking thing, but it doesn't. And this whole fucking movie is like a religious incel movie. It's like Jesus decided to fuck incel them, and that's what we came out with. This mother Motherfucker, I swear to God, this motherfucker, I swear to God, I swear to God, listen to me. Listen to me, you're not listening. Look at me right now, listen to me. Moon Horse telling you. End of this movie, end of this movie, I'm not spoiling shit before you, but the end of this movie, he wears a fedora. I'm not kidding. He wears a fedora, he, like in three scenes. In three scenes, he's wearing it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And he proposes to this girl, where? 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 The baby food aisle. Because he wants to pump babies into her. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm serious. And the entire thing, the ending. Oh, we're going to have like a, the, the big ending kiss. Because they can't kiss. They can't touch each other. They held hands once in church. In church. Religious and so. So. She kisses him. On the cheek. Because. Mm, my lady has to be classy much like he does so she has to give up the fact that she had ex-boyfriends was married once no 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 all that has to be erased has to be erased because my gentleman wants to fucking make sure that my lady is only there for him he even has like an emo fucking broody bullshit thing where he throws a fit because she was married once and has ex-boyfriends I swear to God, there's actually a scene, multiple scenes in this movie that show him 
walking on the railroad tracks. Walking on the railroad tracks. Because it's 1987, and we need to prove that the filmmaker is deep. He's the guy who made the movie. I'm serious. No, no the, guy, the main guy, the, the 30-something guy with the 19-year-old haircut and the hoodie, made the movie. It's Clay Walsh. It's fitting that they named him Clay. Because his personality is that of dirt. So... We inadvertently made a weird leap because I was watching and reading Fifty Shades of Grey because it is a fan fiction that got published of Twilight, which is funny. Then watching this shit, watching Old Fashioned, we somehow stumbled onto a movie that is not only a fan fiction of a fan fiction, but is a fan fiction of a fan fiction with a motherfucking religious nice guy as the main character. And I'm not calling him a nice guy because he wears a fedora, likes old-fashioned things, and says shit like, milady. No, I'm calling him that because they call him that in the movie! They literally constantly refer to him as Clay Walsh, the nice guy. That should be your fucking red flag. That should be your absolute goddamn warning sign. This motherfucker is exactly that. It is the weirdest shit. I have never seen this. I have never seen nice guys portrayed as a good thing in religious films. Which makes me think that on some weird level, the guy who made this movie is subscribed to one of those weird incel forums, but is also the same one who says shit like, you know, we should hate all women, but, you know, you know guys like, uh, Jesus is a cool guy, you know? He, he can help us find pussy, you know? Because that's what we need. We need uh, we know, uh, yeah. I don't know why I gave him that voice. He doesn't sound like that, but fuck it. It, it doesn't matter. This is the weirdest fucking movie I've ever seen. This shit's weird. I'm drunk as shit, and this movie is weird. That's all I can say. I didn't... I honestly was not expecting to stumble into nice guy territory. And and Sango's pointing this shit out the whole time. He's like, he says shit like milady. He's doing the shit. He's doing the fucking nice guy thing. He's doing the incel nice guy thing where it's just like women have to admire to... You know, they have to listen to my standards. And she was the one who was just like pointed out like he said milady and I was like holy shit no it's gotta be a coincidence and we get to the end of the movie and the motherfucker standing there in the fucking grocery food aisle cause that's where they met in the grocery aisle this sounds like fucking neckbeard fan fiction it's just like we met in the grocery aisle and that's where I proposed to her the only thing he was missing the only thing he was missing he was wearing the fucking fedora he was missing the fingerless gloves and the goddamn katana to show that he was like a true gentleman of class and style and power or that no chads would ever take away his milady prize if he had had that I swear to god this shit would have been on reddit like five years ago this would have been on reddit before the fucking movie was made I cannot believe he was literally wearing a fedora I had to rewind that part like twice this motherfucker was wearing a goddamn fedora and was just like, we're going to get married. Like, he it was the weirdest shit because he's like, he's going to refer to her because they met in the fucking grocery store. Not met, but they had like this big romantic encounter in the grocery store in the baby food aisle, which is weird. But he's like, you know, we're going to propose to her here. But because she said something about like wanting to be swept off her feet because romance is something like feeling the sand between her toes or some shit like that. He, he basically got the grocery store to let him do this and filled, like, the aisle all the way up to where he was with, like, sand. I don't know whose job it is to remove all the goddamn sand, but I'd be pissed off if that was my job. If I worked at the grocery store and there's, and I came in, there's just, like, a big river of sand all the way up to the baby field. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? I was like, oh, this guy proposed to his girlfriend. I, like, I don't give a fuck who he proposed to. Look at this shit. You know how hard it is to get rid of sand? I'm going to need, like, a broom, a bucket, and a fucking blower. What the fuck is wrong with you? Where are these candles here? Who the fuck is this asshole? No, no, no. You need to pay me double overtime. I want time and a half for this shit. I demand time and a half for this shit. The movie takes place in Ohio. I think I can demand that shit. Look, you either pay me time and a half, or I swear to Christ, I'm burning this motherfucker down. I know you people believe in Jesus. He's going to show up because I'm going to burn this bitch to the ground. Oh, God, yeah. So the movie takes place in Ohio. Sangha's reminding me of shit. She's not feeling good enough to talk, so I'm going to tell you some shit. So, like, for some reason, 
they don't say tomatoes. Like like Clay apparently grows tomatoes in a in a garden in his aunt's backyard because she likes tomatoes and his uncle really liked tomatoes. So he's like, you know, I'll do this. Hey, you know what? I respect that. You take care of your elders, all right? Respect. It's fine. I would do that shit for my grandparents too. If my grandparents were ever like, you know, we like lima beans. Would you grow lima beans? Like, bro, I'll be down there every fucking day growing every lima bean I can find. Absolutely, yeah. Respect that shit. But they say tomatoes. <laughs> I have family in Mississippi who says that shit. Boy, you in Ohio. Who the fuck you think you is saying tomato? Who the fuck you think this is the same shit as this is the same shit as when I meet people who are like from or like from fucking like New Jersey and they're like, Oh, you're you're from Louisiana? Do y'all talk about New Orleans? Like, boy, I'm about to punch you in the neck. You better stop that shit. Don't you be making fun of them people. That's my people. I'm from down south, man. We fucked people up for that shit. That shit fucking threw me when they started saying tomatoes. And they didn't even say it like it was... A, they don't say it like in, in Mississippi. Because that's the, the rednecks. I know a lot of redneck people out there. You know, tomato. You gotta say it like that. No, they say tomato. That's the whitest way I've ever heard tomato said. And this is being said by white people. Tomato is a redneck thing. Mostly white people say it. And y'all are saying tomato. How the fuck you did that? You made white slang whiter. Boy, I can't even process that shit. I need like five minutes and a drink to think about that. I'm on the Mississippi border and you broke my ass. I don't even know how you did that. God damn. Holy shit. You made up like a whole different word. I can't process that. But they say it like six or seven times. And it's super weird. Now, I said a couple times before that his aunt is like one of the only good parts of this movie. I'm not a religious person. She obviously is. But she keeps saying shit that like throws him off, which is really funny. Um, she's got like a dark sense of humor, which is okay. Like at one point she fakes her own death because he says like, I rented the upstairs room to a girl. Uh, and she's like, oh my God, a woman? You actually interacted with a woman? I'm dead. Uh, um... She intentionally talks to, like, pictures of his uncle, who has obviously passed on, because it creeps him out, and she thinks it's funny. It is funny. Uh, personally, I think that's really funny, because it creeps him out, and he's an asshole, so I think it's funny. Um, there's, like, one part where she, like, tells this girl, Amber, like, you know, Clay grows tomatoes. He's, like, grilling on the back porch, and she's, like, walking to the backyard with him, and he's, like, he grows tomatoes in her backyard, because his uncle always wanted that, and she's, like, saying that's so weak as the audience can hear it, but he can't hear it, and they're approaching him as, as she says that, and she's, like, and he goes, like, what are y'all talking about, and she goes, none of your business, and they keep walking, and it's, like, tell him, Granny, you tell his ass, tell that white boy to shut the fuck up, do it, <laughs> I like her, she's funny, uh, <laughs> But she's basically constantly throwing shade at him, which he desperately needs. Um, his his aunt feels like the grounding point for a lot of his shit that he's ignoring. And basically, it's only because he's in a relationship he decided to listen to her. Um, so his aunt is like... His aunt is like the, the religious family member... <laughs> Who <laughs> basically is is basic is basically telling him like, look, I get it, you like you like Jesus, but boy, you need to calm down, okay? It's getting weird. <laughs> um, like you have to stop. Uh, look, we love Jesus as much as the next motherfucker, but you're taking it to like weird levels, and you've got to stop. It's according to her, it's been like nine years since he dated anybody so basically he locked himself off for a decade because he was just like oh you know I, I made these movies and girls showed their titties and I was just like Bleh. and all broken up about it sad emo stance um, but at the same time it's like okay so if you made these movies when you were in college it's been nine years let's say you were 21 you're like 30 something and you're still, like, perpetuating yourself like an emo teenager. Bro, I'm, like, 30-something. And I don't do that. Because it's weird. You have to stop, dude. It's fucking weird. Okay? Stop emo walking on the train track. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Okay, you fucked up. You did a bad thing. Reciprocate. Make things better. 
move forward in your life. Well, he apparently doubled down on that shit because he was like, I'm holy, I found Jesus. I was like, cool, okay, it makes you feel better, it's fine. Yeah, but I'm so holy, everybody in my church isn't holy enough for me. All right, maybe you should step back. And he's like, nobody's holy enough for me, that's why I won't date anybody. Okay, you've officially gone off the deep end. David Koresh is looking for your ass. You fucking crazy. You can wind up like them fucking, you know, you can, you can be in one of those Heaven's Gate cults. Shave your head, wear a robe, burn the whole building down, kill 50 people kind of thing. Drink the Kool-Aid, drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, you crazy as shit. So, it's weird. The whole movie is goddamn weird. It's like, it's like religious neck beardery has a cult apparently. And it's like pure flex is just pitching balls at these motherfuckers. Just head first. They're going all in on this. They really want people to buy into this. I haven't seen the rest of their movies, but at some point I probably will. Because I'm just crazy enough to do it. I read Fifty Shades. I'm, I read Sonichu. I'm ready for a lot of shit. You guys know this. Let's do this shit. With enough alcohol, I can face down anything. I've seen some pretty fucked up movies. This is just one in a long line of fucked up movies. So basically, uh, the roundup. The end of this. The summary. Is this movie worth watching? Well, it's funny. I mean, if you if you find neck beardery and just crazy religious shit funny, then yeah, this is funny. Um, is it worth watching as a movie? Not entirely. It's not a movie movie. It doesn't fit in movie standards. It's very broken. There's a lot of weird ADR. There's a lot of like weird leaps of faith. <coughs> uh, ironic, considering what kind of movie it is. There's a lot of shit you just kind of have to already know or already believe in before you get into it. And there's a lot of stuff you kind of have to, like, basically make your own conclusions on because they don't bother to explain it. Um, is it funny? Well, yeah, but I like really bad movies, so that depends on you. Do you find Plan 9 from Outer Space or any of John Waters' films funny? Then you might like this because it's really bad. It's funny because it's terrible. Um, it's basically in the same vein as, like, Neil Breen movies, but very religious. The ADR is hysterical. The fact that they have to, like, dub in people's lines the entire first half of the movie, and it feels really, really fake, um, is really, really funny. It, it's obvious, like, the entire first conversation of this movie has been redone so many times through so many takes that everybody has to hit every single note so perfectly and their audio does not match most of the audio in the rest of the movie so it feels like robots talking it feels like robots wearing human suits are announcing everything that goes on in this movie uh, the background stories of most of the characters in this movie are far more interesting than the stories like at one point so Clay has this friend who's like a dealer of like old furniture like he finds old furniture and like storage lockers and shit and it's just like, hey, man, I found this old furniture. You want this furniture? And he shows Clay, like, a picture of this old car. Like, this old 1930s-looking uh, Model A Ford. And it's like, I'm going to fix it up. It's a busted old car, but I'm going to fix it up. And then by the end of the movie, he does. Because it's like a limo or something that's used in the end of the movie. So, his story is far more interesting, but we never hear anything about it. Like, he's in a crappy relationship, but he found his passion by restoring and finding old things. Which is interesting. Um, his only friend, like, well, black friend, because that's all he is. He's the black guy who's a friend. Has a really cool, interesting life, because he's just like, obviously he and his wife are very much in love. They have a kid. They have a really nice house. They have obviously interesting jobs that make them a lot of money and make them very interesting people, but we don't hear anything about them. Because we're not supposed to like them, because they're not religious or some shit. I don't fucking know. They seem really nice. I like them. I think they're cool. Uh, their kid speaks Chinese. I think that's cool. So, I don't know. Every side story in this movie is a million times more interesting than every main character in this movie. What happened to Clay's uncle and his aunt? Like, why does his uncle... What, like, when did his uncle pass away? What did he do? What was his story? So there's a whole bunch of pictures of his uncle and I think he's in, like, a Navy uniform in one of the pictures. What's his story? We don't know. Seems more interesting than this story. We're never gonna hear it, though. So, I don't understand. This movie was, like... It was weird. It was bad and weird. 
So, I don't know. I think Songo passed out on me. Yeah, I think she was asleep. I'm going to go to bed now. One horse is very drunk. This movie sucked. I'm going to watch some more terrible movies later in the future. And I'm going to do more reviews of them because I think they're really funny. And I like this kind of shit. Also, I love you guys. So I'm going to go to bed now. Okay. I love you. Oh, wait. Like, comment, and subscribe. Also, there's a Patreon. I said that like a robot because I forgot most of it until just now. But you should do all those things because, you know, liking, commenting, subscribing, and dollars are all important things. Yes. I'm staring at a poster of P. Lander Z for some reason. I'm really fucked up right now. We saw P. Lander Z the other day. It was a long fucking night. It was so cool. P. Lander Yellow is an amazing dude. All right. We love you all. Goodbye. Oh, God. Goodbye.